Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our psalm for today is Psalm 65. Psalm 65, for the choir director, a psalm of David, a song. Praise is rightfully yours, God in Zion. Vows to you will be fulfilled. All humanity will come to you, the one who hears prayer. Iniquities overwhelm me. Only you can attend for our rebel can atone for our rebellions. How happy is the one you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We will be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. You answer us in righteousness, with awe-inspiring works, God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the distant seas. You establish the mountains by your power. You are robed with strength. You silence the roar of the seas, the roar of their waves, and the tumult of the nations. Those who live far away are awed by your signs. You make east and west shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly, enriching it greatly. God's stream is filled with water, for you prepare the earth in this way, providing people with grain. You soften it with showers and bless its growth, soaking its furrows and leveling its ridges. You crown the year with your goodness. Your carts overflow with plenty. The wilderness pastures overflow and the hills are robed with joy. Pastures are clothed with flocks and the valleys covered with grain. They shout in triumph. Indeed, they sing. Now that the offense caused by Achan has been removed, the people of Israel are ready to attack Ai again. This time, with the Lord's plan and his blessing, they will succeed. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all the troops with you and go and attack Ai. Look, I have handed over to you the king of Ai, his people, city, and land. Treat Ai and its king as you did Jericho and its king, except that you may plunder its spoils and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and all the troops set out to attack Ai. Joshua selected 30,000 of his best soldiers and sent them out at night. He commanded them, pay attention. Lie in ambush behind the city, not too far from it, and all of you be ready. Then I and all the people who are with me will approach the city. When they come out against us as they did the first time, we will flee from them. They will come after us until we have drawn them away from the city, for they will say, they are fleeing from us as before. While we are fleeing from them, you are to come out of your ambush and seize the city. The Lord your God will hand it over to you. After taking the city, set it on fire. Follow the Lord's command. See that you do as I have ordered you. So Joshua sent them out, and they went to the ambush site and waited between Bethel and Ai to the west of Ai. But he spent the night with the troops. Joshua started early the next morning and mobilized them. Then he and the elders of Israel led the people up to Ai. All the troops who were with him went up and approached the city, arriving opposite Ai, and camped to the north of it, with a valley between them and the city. Now Joshua had taken about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai to the west of the city. The troops were stationed in this way, the main camp to the north of the city and its rear guard to the west of the city. And that night Joshua went into the valley. When the king of Ai saw the Israelites, the men of the city hurried and went out early in the morning so that he and all his people could engage Israel in battle, the suitable place facing the Arabah. But he did not know there was an ambush waiting for him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel pretended to be beaten back by them and fled toward the wilderness. 
Then all the troops of Ai were summoned to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and were drawn away from the city. Not a man was left in Ai or Bethel who did not go out after Israel, leaving the city exposed while they pursued Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Hold out the javelin in your hand toward Ai, for I will hand the city over to you. So Joshua held out his javelin toward it. When he held out his hand, the men in ambush rose quickly from their position. They ran, entered the city, captured it, and immediately set it on fire. The men of Ai turned and looked back, and smoke from the city was rising to the sky. They could not escape in any direction, and the troops who had fled to the wilderness now became the pursuers. When Joshua and all Israel saw that the men in ambush had captured the city and that smoke was rising from it, they turned back and struck down the men of Ai. The men in ambush came out of the city against them, and the men of Ai were trapped between the Israelite forces, some on one side and some on the other. They struck them down until no survivor or fugitive remained, but they captured the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. When Israel had finished killing everyone living in Ai who had pursued them into the open country, and when every last one of them had fallen by the sword, all Israel returned to Ai and struck it down with the sword. The total of those who fell that day, both men and women, was 12,000, all the people of Ai. Joshua did not draw back his hand that was holding the javelin until all the inhabitants of Ai were completely destroyed. Israel plundered only the cattle and spoil of that city for themselves, according to the Lord's command that he had given Joshua. Joshua burned Ai and left it a permanent ruin, still desolate today. He hung the body of the king of Ai on a tree until evening, and at sunset Joshua commanded that they take his body down from the tree. They threw it down at the entrance of the city gates and put a large pile of rocks over it, which still remains today. It's hard for us, New Testament, non-Jewish Christians, to understand how earth-shattering and seismic a change in Peter's visits to Cornelius and his family was. As Peter returns to Jerusalem, he is going to be accused by a certain group of Jewish believers of um, doing something that was improper. So he is going to defend his ministry to the Gentiles and demonstrate from his own experience and from what God had very clearly shown to him that this was the way things were now. The separation between Jew and Gentile, that's gone now. And now both Jew and Gentile are united as one people through faith in Jesus. The apostles and the brothers and sisters who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. When Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began to explain to them step by step. I was in the town of Joppa praying, and I saw, in a trance, an object that resembled a large sheet coming down, being lowered by its four corners from heaven. And it came to me. When I looked closely and considered it, I saw the four-footed animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, I said, for nothing impure or ritually unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a voice answered from heaven a second time, What God has made clean, you must not call impure. Now this happened three times, and everything was drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to accompany them with no doubts at all. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we went into the man's house. He reported to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and call for Simon, who is also named Peter. He will speak a message to you 
by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came down on them, just as on us at the beginning. I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then, God gave them the same gift that he also gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. How could I possibly hinder God? When they heard this, they became silent, and they glorified God, saying, So then, God has given repentance resulting in life, even to the Gentiles. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.